Rust 1.66 is out, the six week release cycle is up, and we're ready to go over what's new. What's new in Rust 1.66 released today? As always, to update to the next Rust release, use Rust Up Update Stable. Before Rust 1.66, you could use explicit discriminants on enums to get a enum as U8 or enum as some integer, but this wasn't the case for any enums with fields in their variants. Not only can you now use specific discriminants for variants with fields in them, but you can also combine that with things like rep or int. This makes working with enums in general easier, as well as working with enums across the C boundary if you're working with other languages. Blackbox this is a super interesting function because it's mostly used in benchmarking to actually make the compiler not optimize your code. Now, this is useful because in benchmarks, you often want to benchmark a specific thing, and maybe that function doesn't have a return value that you actually use. This is because you're running the benchmark to run the function, not to use the return value in the rest of your function. Core hint black box is a newly stabilized function that indicates to the compiler to be maximally pessimistic about what optimizations it can actually apply. Cargo edit has been a useful package in the ecosystem for quite a while, and we got cargo add a couple versions ago in Rust. In Rust 1.66, we also now have cargo remove. Add and remove together now mean that you can programmatically add and remove dependencies from your cargo project. The source text function on a span in a proc macro means that you can better represent error messages by actually showing what code uh, might be relevant in that error message. This is not only useful for error messages, but also potentially proc macro crimes. Unsigned and signed integers both got a number of functions that allow them to be added to or removed from other integers, even if they aren't the same type. These functions allow you to do things like add an i8 to a u8 or subtract an i8 from a u8, and thus they return options. This is in contrast to the normal addition and subtraction operations, which normally would just overflow. Btree set and btree map are often my defaults over using hash maps because they are ordered and when you iterate over them they're deterministic. Both these data structures now got new utility functions for accessing the first and last keys or values. File descriptor types and traits are now accessible from standard OS FD, which makes it easier to write code that works across Unix and WASI systems. If you have a tuple inside of an optional type, you can now use unzip to turn that tuple inside of the option to two options with a single value each. You can now also use half open patterns when matching on ranges in, well, match or anywhere that accepts patterns, really. That means that not only can you now match on from wherever you are to the end, but also from the beginning to some value. And that's all I got for you for the Rust 1.66 release for today. Go download it and have a great time.